Today we are here to discuss about topic A, which is mechanics, and we are going to start discussing the first topic, which is kinematics. So let's see under the first topic of kinematics, what are the things covered? Under kinematics, we are going to study about the concept of distance displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, and the application of equations of motion. Let's go in detail now. Okay. So, kinematics basically describes the motion of an object. The layman who doesn't know certain terms in physics can use terms like object is moving faster, object has slowed down, object is increasing its speed, decreasing its speed, and so on. So all these terms that we use in our daily life is nothing but the vocabulary of kinematics. And in the language of kinematics, we describe the motion of an object using terms like distance and displacement, speed and velocity, and acceleration. Let's revise these concepts again. To understand distance, we can see this diagram. Distance is nothing but the length of the actual path taken. So if there is a person at X and he completes its journey and reaches Y by following the largest path, which is the blue path that you can see here, he follows the actual path. Then the length of the actual path that he has taken to go from X to Y, that is called as distance. While the shortest route that connects X and Y, which is the shortest distance, is called as displacement. Let's see an example here. There is a park. A person starts at X and comes back at X. So he moves 4 meters to the east, 2 meters south, 4 meters west, and 2 meters back. You have to calculate and tell me what is the distance. So by now, you should have got the answer that distance is nothing but the length of the actual path, which is nothing but 4 plus 2 plus 4 again and plus 2 again, which gives me around 12 meters. So the distance traveled by the person is 12 meters. What about displacement? Displacement is the shortest distance which connects the initial and final point. Since he has returned back to the same position, there is no gap between the initial and final point. Hence, displacement is zero. Or rather, the plus four has cancelled with the minus 4. Same to do with the plus 2 has cancelled with minus 2. So the net effect is 0. So displacement is 0. Let's see an IB question. Pause the video and try to solve and look for the correct answer. So if you have solved correctly, you should have got the answer as 8 meters. Let's do one more example. Pause the video, try to solve and look for the answer. The correct answer is B. The distance is circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r and displacement because he is completed and reached back to the same point, it's d0. The radius is half of the diameter, so radius is three. So three times two, which is six pi. Let's now take it further. Look at the animation here. 
there is an animation which shows that there is a car going. It takes 0.12 hours to complete the journey. The longest route that it has taken is 23 kilometers. But the shortest route that connects the initial and final point is given in the animation. Look in the animation and find out what is speed and what is velocity. You can see the formula. Speed is nothing but distance traveled per unit time. And velocity is the change in displacement over the time taken. Try to calculate and look for the answer. So you should have got the average speed is total distance over total time, which is around 135 kilometers per hour. And the average velocity is the displacement over the time, which is around 23.5, which is 24 kilometers per hour. Let's see this motion. Look at this motion and decide and tell to yourself whether it is moving at a constant speed or is it moving at a varied speed. So you can see that when an object is moving very clearly, the condition is when an object moves in a circular path, it moves at a constant speed of 10 meters per second but velocity is not constant. The reason being, velocity is always tangential at a given point. Since the direction of velocity is constantly changing, in vectors, if the magnitude or direction changes, velocity changes. So velocity is a vector quantity. If Even if its magnitude or direction is changing, it would set to change. And hence, circular motion is an accelerated motion because there is a change in direction of velocity. How, do, how to find instantaneous speed in a given situation? In a given situation, to find instantaneous speed, for example, in the question exam, they ask you to find the instantaneous speed at the ninth second. Look for the ninth second in the graph, which is between 8 and 10. Plot a tangent with a scale. And the slope of the tangent gives you the instantaneous speed at a given point. So change in y coordinates, which is the endpoints 10 minus 0 and change in x is nothing but 14 minus 5. So change in y over change in x gives you velocity. And this velocity is called as instantaneous velocity at a given time. Average velocity is nothing but total distance over total time or total displacement over total time. Let's see an example here. Pause the video, try to solve and come back for the answer. So if you have solved it, the average speed is nothing but the total distance over total time. Average velocity is displacement over time. Your answer should be C. Total distance over total time. Next, let's solve acceleration. Acceleration is defined as change in velocity over time. So you can see here, change is always final minus initial. So if you can see the terms here, U stands for initial velocity, V stands for final velocity, A stands for acceleration, and T stands for time. We do not have S in this equation, but S generally talks about 
position or distance or displacement. So look at this animation and see what is the change in acceleration with the change in velocity. So if you can look into this animation, you can very clearly see whenever the speed of the car is increasing, acceleration is in the direction of velocity. But when the speed is reducing, acceleration is in the opposite direction, which means acceleration is positive if change in velocity is positive. Acceleration is negative if the change, the final velocity is lesser than initial velocity, then acceleration is negative. I had explained it that for an object moving at a constant speed, changing its direction is also called as an accelerated motion. Hence, circular motion is an accelerated motion. Now, let's see different types of graphs. The different types of graphs that we learn in physics are, the first is a linear graph, which is a straight line. And the equation of a straight line is nothing but y is equal to a plus bx. You can very clearly see here, a is the y-intercept that you get here and B is the slope of the graph. So any linear graph can be written in the form of Y is equal to A plus BX. The next type of relation that you see is an inverse relation. The example given here is pressure and volume. Pressure is inversely proportional to volume. As one increases, the other one reduces. Such a graph is called as an inverse graph. The third type of graph is an inverse square graph, which is the example of a gravitational force equation, where we can tell that F is proportional to the two constants, which is the product of the two masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two masses. So if you plot a graph of F versus R, then an inverse square graph is given like this. The next is the double inverse relation, you can see. We generally use this in parallel circuits. So the total resistance in parallel is nothing but the sum of the reciprocal of the two resistors, if it's for two resistors. So this is the double inverse relation. The next is uh, usually asked equation where we can apply even the equations of motion, like S is equal to UT plus one half AT square, which we are going to do the further part of the slides. One half AT square. In this equation, if the initial velocity is zero and the force on object is constant, this part is zero and acceleration is a constant, I can tell that S is proportional to T square. Such a graph is called as the power relation. The next is the square root graph. Power relation again, it's a square root graph. And the last that we need to do is the logarithmic graph or the exponential graph. This is the exponential graph, the last one. We'll be doing this in different topics in physics. And this is the logarithmic relationship. Let's now come to the 
XT, VT, AT graphs, which is very important for you to understand kinematics. So the trick here is slope of position time graph gives you velocity, slope. And you take the slope of the first graph, you get the answer for the second. Slope of the second gives you the answer for the third. So now just try every question and come back for the answer. If you have solved it, you should have got the answers like this. So the slope of a linear graph, you can see, is a constant and hence here velocity is a positive constant. Slope of a flat graph is zero and hence acceleration is zero. This is a returning graph. For a return graph that is linear, the velocity is negative and a constant. So it's a negative constant. And for a flat graph, the slope is zero and hence acceleration is zero. For the curve, the hint is look for the tangent at a given point. So look for tangents. When you look for the tangent, the slope of the tangent at a given point gives you the velocity at that point. Slope of the tangent is flat here. So it starts with zero. As you move upwards, this it's getting steeper and steeper, which means velocity is increasing. And we can see that slope of this is a linear graph, slope of this is a constant, and hence its acceleration is constant. Go for the next graph. You can see slope of this is flat and it's increasing, but in the negative fashion. So here it starts with zero and goes down on the negative axis. And hence, slope is negative, which is acceleration is negative. And if you can see the next graph, the velocity is starting with the high positive, high value, which is positive, and then it goes on to become flat. That is, it's becoming zero, close to zero. And slope of this is negative. Pause the video, try to solve this example and come back for the answer. So if you have seen all the options very carefully, the only option that works here is that the car is always accelerating. Take one more example. So the hint here is slope of the answer is the question. So look for the slope in all the options that gives you the question back. So if you have seen it correctly, the option is C. The reason being, the slope here is flat, which is zero. It is highest here, which is the highest acceleration. And then the slope gradually tapers and comes back to zero. So the acceleration is coming to zero. Let's revise the equations of motion. The first equation of motion comes from the definition of acceleration. Acceleration is change in velocity over time. And after we rearrange, we get the first equation V is equal to U plus AT. The second equation tells you about the average distance. Average distance covered is nothing but the average velocity times time. The third one is distance is equal to ut plus one half at square. And the last one is v square is equal to u square plus two as. 
let's look for an application, an interesting question. There's one concept that you have to remember that the equations of motion is always applicable for a constant A. Acceleration should always be of a constant magnitude and constant direction. That is the condition for the application of equations of motion. Go through the example, try to solve, try to apply one of the equations of motion and come back for the answer. So if you have solved it, there are two vehicles in this situation. The first one is a car, which is covering the first 25 kilometers of its journey at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. And the next half of the journey, which is again 25 kilometers at 80 kilometers per hour, you are required to find the time. So it's just speed is distance over time. Average speed is total distance over total time. So if we are doing that way, you should get the time for the first half of the journey is 25 over 40 and the next half is 25 over 80. When you add the total time that you get is either 0 0.9375 hours or 56.25 minutes. But if you see the truck, the truck spends half its time of the journey at an average speed of 40. So you know that at T half, it is covering with a speed of 40 kilometers per hour and the next T half at 80 kilometers per hour and the total distance is 50 kilometers. So instead of taking time as the subject, you can take distance as the subject. So distance is equal to speed times time. So you can see here, the first half of the journey is going at 40. So the distance covered is T half times 40. And the next distance is T half times 80. And the total distance is 50. Here, while solving, we get the answer as 0.833. And very clearly, we can see that truck is faster because it's taking lesser time. We'll now do one IP type of question. Pause the video, try to apply an equation of motion and come back for the answer. So if you have understood, we can use the equation of motion of V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. So here the distance covered is V. The initial velocity of the body is V. They are asking you to find the final velocity. Okay, so there are two situations. V final, let's write it like this, V final square is nothing but V initial square, which is V square plus 2A times D. For the second situation, the distance covered is half of D. So the V final square in that situation is equal to V initial square plus 2A times D over 2. Initial velocity is 0 because it's starting from rest. So we can have the first part as zero. This part goes as zero. 
in both the case. So after rearranging, we can see the V final square for the first situation is 2AD and for the second case, V final square is equal to AD. So what is the comparison of the V final in the second situation and V final of the first? If we divide the two, V final in the first situation over V final in the second situation, the answer that we get is C. Let's go for one more example. Read the example very carefully and try to apply it. And if you have gone through it carefully, the answer that you get should be C. So that's all for today, guys. See you. Please like and subscribe so that you can see the further parts of kinematics.